Hello there, in this video we're going to take a look at variable fonts in Figma and what they are and how you can utilize them when you're in Figma. Okay, so let's take a look at the site that Figma have put together. So as you hover over certain elements with the mouse, it gives you a preview of what happens. So this top one is white, this one here is slant, same with this one, this one is width, and let's have a look at this one. This one's labeled as gravity, which looks really cool when you interact with it. Okay, so let's scroll down the page. You have a contents on the left hand side. So it's given us a little summary here. So variable fonts open up the range of styles within a single typeface, giving designers more control and expressive possibilities. So it's giving us lots of interactive previews as we go through this website. So what's the difference between static and variable fonts? I'll just read this now. Static fonts are fixed to one specific style as part of a font family and normally have fixed options like bold or italic. So variable fonts use one or more axes to offer a much wider range of styles. Okay, so let's have a look. So what is an axis? An axis is an expression of a single aspect of a typeface's design. For example, width determines how narrow or how wide characters can be. Weight describes how light or bold it is. And again, you can see this here in the preview. So let's continue scrolling down this page. There's a lot of information, but I actually want to get into the Figma file where you can play with these things yourself. So here's an example here of regular and italic, and this is using the variable font with a slant axis. So you've got more control here. Let's go down. Let's see variable fonts in action. So getting a better read on things. This is adjusting the optical size. So as it says here, you can fine tune a better reading experience with optical sizing. Um, and there's some adjustments that you can make here. So here on screen, there's a button and they're adjusting the grade of the text within that button on the variable font. So you can see how that impacts the button and how it expands. So let's continue going down. Uh, let's see what else we have. We've got express yourself here. I'm guessing this is using the weight axis here and you can see what that's doing to this font on the left. It's quite retro and quite cool. Let's keep going. Uh, I think we're pretty much at the end of the page, so that's good. Try it out in Figma. This is what I wanted to do. So let's switch over to Figma and see what's in the file. Okay, so now we're in the Figma file. I'm just going to zoom in a little bit and have a look at the presentation that they've done. Uh, variable fonts. So this is the playground to get us up to speed. Uh, so let's go. So there's a contents here. What are variable fonts? How to use fonts in Figma? Try variable fonts and additional resources. So let's go to the next row. Okay, so what are variable fonts? Let's go here. Okay, so a variable font is an open type font format that includes many variations of a typeface, all in a single file rather than a separate font file for each style permutation. So the main benefits, you can access a range of styles using variable font access to better optimize and express your design typography. Since all these styles come in a single variable font versus multiple static fonts, this can also reduce HTTP requests and your web page load time. So that's good to know as well. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, let's read a little bit more here. So what is a variable font axis? Uh, an axis is an expression of a single aspect of a typeface's design. Uh, looking here, we've got five standard variable font axis. Weight, width, italic, slant, and optical size. Uh, weight, for example, defines how light or bold a font looks. The weight axis allows a variable font to specify its boldness across an entire numeric range. Meanwhile, standard fonts contain just one weight style, which for example, regular or bold. Okay, so that's good to know. Let's dive in to how we use it in Figma. So this is the type section when you're inside Figma. So Figma loads in Google fonts. Some Google fonts were designed as variable fonts and are ready for you to use without any extra steps. Uh, it's also saying here, some fonts you see in your font picker may have been uploaded by your organization, by shared fonts. If those uploaded fonts were also variable fonts, you'll be able to access them and use them. Okay, that's good to know. So how do I know if a font is a variable font? So if you see the variable font axis option at the bottom of the name style list, which is here, this means it is indeed a variable font. 
or on the type settings, which is shown here, there'll be a new option variable and that will give us the options within that. Okay, so this is the new options within that heading variable. And as you can see, there are different sliders that you can utilize to adjust, in this example, the weight and the slant. And I'm guessing depending on the variable font, we'll get different options that we can play with. So save and reuse custom variable styles. So it looks like here, um, any custom styles that you create uh, with these variable fonts will be added to the styles menu. Okay, are we at the end? Yes, we are. Let's go to the next row. Okay, so this is where I wanted to be. Let's have a go at variable fonts. Okay, so weight. Let's have a look at the instructions. So as we covered above, weight is the most common variable font access since many fonts include bold styles. Looks like there's a bit of a typo there. From headlines to quotes, you can use the weight axis to select the perfect amount of boldness. Small adjustments can also make a big difference, such as emphasizing subheaders, but not too much, so they're still legible. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's adjust each of these text elements on the card to create a visual hierarchy. Okay, so first of all, let's press Command and Backslash to get my menus, and I'm gonna press Command, and I'm gonna click now, so I'm on this font. And let's click on the three dots. I'm straight into variable. Uh, so what do we want to do? We want to give it a visual hierarchy. Well, let's up the weight of this because this is going to be the heading. Let's give it a real bulky weight. So let's go 900. Okay, let's do the same for the next set of text. So let's click here, click on the three dots, room variable, and let's just increase ever so slowly. Let's go to 600. Maybe that's too much. Let's go back to five. Yeah, let's leave it at five. And let's just go into read now. Let's just go into the read now, click on the three dots. Let's make that super chunky at 900. Okay, that'll do for now. We can play around with it, but I guess this is just an example. Okay, on to the next one, width. Let's adjust the width to make the text fit inside the box. Okay, so I'm gonna command click, I'm gonna click on the three dots, and let's go, just move over a bit. Let's drag the width slider down, and I'm guessing it's going to snap. There we go. So it's about there, and that snaps and fits within the text box. Perfect, so that's how you adjust the width. Okay, so moving on to grade, we've got some information on what grade is here, which you can read through. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to command click onto the hello text. So it's saying here, this same font on black is hard to read. Let's increase the grade so that it stands out better. So let's zoom in a tiny bit more. Click on the three dots. Where's grade? Let's go here. As you reduce the grade, you can see it's a little bit harder to see, but if we increase it, that definitely makes it clearer and easier to read. And there we go. That's what it looks like on white and what it looks like on black. Let's go over to slant. Try adjusting the slant axis to help this quote come alive. Okay, so I'm going to come on click. I'm going to go onto the three dots and let's go to slant and let's just drag that down slowly. Let's see what it does. What happens if we go all the way to the other end? Okay, and that's the midpoint. Yeah, let's go all the way to the other end. So it makes it a little bit more interesting to look at. Okay, so now onto optical size. Uh, let's just have a quick read of this. So the optical size axis subtly adjusts the font's appearance and spacing so that it's more refined across the font sizes. Smaller optical sizes, for example, will have a larger spacing, taller X height, and less stroke contrast to make the text appear sturdier and easier to read. Larger optical sizes can include height and contrast and a tighter letter spacing to make the headings appear more delicate and intricate. It's recommended that the numeric value of the axis match the rendered font size. In Figma, this is automatically done via a checkbox. It's given us an example here, and we've got this card uses the same font throughout. The headline is optimized for large sizes, while the body is optimized for smaller sizes. Try adjusting the optical sizing slider for each to see the difference. Well, let's see what it does. So click on the three dots. Let's just move along. So that makes the font look like that. Let's just drag it all the way to the left. And that seems to push it out a little bit more. So what I'm gonna do, it says set the optical size automatically. It's gonna tick that, and that auto sets it. Let's go down here to the next one, 
and uh, let's click and drag out and as you can see that's adjusting the optical size for the text beneath the heading if we drag it all the way to the left it kind of increases the size of the card as well I'm just going to tick on set the optical size automatically and I'm going to close that so that's good it gives us some useful information on optical size okay so let's see what's next in the wild so let's see what they've given us go ahead and play around the axis for this font weight soft one can optical size okay command click let's go to the three dots let's move over a little bit let's increase the weight of this font so it's a bit more chunky let's see what the soft does it seems to adjust the font a little bit all right i'm going to adjust the optical size here i'm going to tick on set it automatically and then if I adjust the weight down a little bit, makes it look a little bit more refined. Okay, so on to the next one. So this one is a wave font. So sometimes variable fonts can be applied beyond the letter form. Let's try it out. Okay, so let's command click. This seems to be a wave font. Let's go on the dots. Let's zoom out a tiny bit. Uh, let's adjust the width first. So that adjusts the width of this font. Kind of looks like an infographic with the way the, uh, the gradient is set on this. Let's change the other variable settings. And it kind of looks like a sound wave. Let's just adjust this next one. That's kind of rounding off the shapes a little bit as well. Again, you can go in, play with the settings to dial it in to how you want it to look. Uh, I think that's it. So they've given us some more resources. Uh, so there's some links here within the file, the help center, and I'm guessing they've got more live streams coming up on variable fonts. But yeah, that's it. I would go to Figma's website. Let's go back. So the website is figma.com forward slash typography forward slash variable fonts. Go and have a look, go and download the file, have a play around with variable fonts and see how they can help you when you're designing. Okay, that's it for this video. I hope it was helpful. Like and subscribe, add some comments, check out some other videos on my channel and I will see you in the next video.